Hello there, this is Kush Sharma from Creative Pad Media. In this tutorial, we will be using AI to remove the wrinkles in this backdrop and go from this to this. It's not gonna be so straightforward, so let's get started. I have given you this image. You will find it in the, uh, the link to download this in the description so that you can work along with me. Also, as always, our focus is on AI these days too. So to use these features, you will need the real Photoshop through Creative Cloud I've given a link in the description again, which will give you a free trial in case you don't have this Photoshop, which has the AI tools in it. Now let's get started. So the first thing that we are gonna do is, is that since we are using AI, sometimes this can be a bit of a hit and miss. So obviously we need to select the backdrop before we can do anything else, but we are just gonna make a very rough selection simply because if it doesn't work, then we have not wasted our time. So I should point out, this is not going to 100% work on every image. AI is still a hit and miss game right now, but usually the process that I'm gonna be showing you is definitely hitting the right spot. So let's get started. So we're gonna quickly make a selection by using select subject, and then we will just be basically creating the inverse or inverting the selection basically to get the most of the backdrop. So you can see, obviously this is not gonna do a great job here, but that is not important right now. Let's just go to select and inverse this. And this is where the important part comes in. We're gonna be using generative fill for this. I have tried over 200 prompts before I found out a winner, okay? And that winner is plain backdrop. So don't type anything like make smooth or something like that. I've tried most of those prompts. Plain backdrop has given me the best results. So I'm gonna hit plain, uh, right plain backdrop and hit generate. And let's see the results here. All right, let's wait for this. And of course, we are gonna get three results. You can see this already, the first result looks absolutely fantastic, right? Of course, it has made some changes. We're gonna, on the, on the subject, we're gonna talk about that later, but first let's see the three uh, variations here. So this, I think, looks good if we compare this with the original, because it even maintains the color. I'm just gonna be talking about that problem also. Like you can see in the second variation here, we get a different color, right? And let's see the third one also. Uh, this one is okay. It actually looks more realistic because here you can actually, it almost feels like with this change in the variation, tonal variation here, like an actual backdrop, okay? But I think we'll either go for one or two. Now I'm just selecting two right now because I actually just wanna show you one trick to correct any color issues because a lot of times when you use this uh, feature, you're gonna get something like this, which is smooth, but it often results in gray colored backdrops, okay? It might have happened to you right now if you were following along with me. So how do you quickly correct that if the color is not exactly like this? Well, what you can do here in this case is, it's literally a one-click solution to that. Just open up a solid color layer. Now, before that, you should, uh, in your foreground color, okay, make sure you have your color ready. So for example, I can right now hide this, go back to our original and we need a color from the backdrop, right? The original backdrop. So I can open up my palette and just use the eyedropper to select the color, like, okay, whichever color you want. So let's say something like brown here, hit okay. Now let's enable this back. Go to the solid color adjustment layer, okay? And select that color. In this case, since it was already selected, it has come here, but basically select that color, hit okay. And then what, we just need to do two things to correct this now. First of all, we need our selection on this layer mask that comes with this adjustment function. And how you can do that is, since we already have it here, you can hold down Alt Option on this layer mask, click and drag it right here. So it's gonna ask you replace layer mask, yes. So that same layer mask comes here, basically our selection now is reflected on this layer mask also. So it's literally a one-click process. And secondly, to get the luminosity back so that we can see the shadows and everything else, we just need to change the blending mode here. So if we change the blending mode of this solid color layer to color here, then we've been able to change the color. So just see. Here the difference is very subtle because already that color was there, but I can show you that it is working because I can actually use this strategy to change it to any color that I want, not just the original backdrop color, for example, if I want something like this, right? if I wanted something like blue. So you can use this strategy, especially when generative fill gives out a gray color. So that is the first part, since for us, it actually did a good job. I don't even need this. I don't even need this variation. The first one was really good. So I can just select that, this one, okay? So now let's 
continue with the second part, which is going to be the important part, which is now we need to correct the subject here, right? Because if we hide this generator fill layer, you can see definitely the hair have been impacted. Once we zoom in, we're going to see that the feet have been impacted. In fact, that's one of the reasons why this is a challenging image. And I deliberately picked this image because she was barefoot. Because what happens is AI really struggles with the, you know, the hands and the feet, okay? So I don't want to be like one of those YouTubers who show you a very convenient image and then you feel like, yeah, just with a few clicks, everything is done. No, I deliberately chose something that is going to match a real life image where you face these problems, okay? So how do we overcome them? So now that we have this, we need to make, first of all, an accurate selection from our original image of the subject itself, okay? Now, definitely we can go ahead and use the selection tools in Photoshop, but according to me, when it comes to quickly making an accurate selection, there are far better tools than Photoshop. When you go outside Photoshop and you just go to some web apps. So I'm going to be showing you one web app, which according to me gives the best results when it comes to removing the background. And then we're going to use that and bring that transparent image back here just to get a selection with literally a single click. So let's see which app I'm talking about. So the app that I'm talking about is called pixelcut.ai. This is one web app that I have been very, very impressed with because their AI tools work in a, in a much superior way to the other AI um, you know, apps that are out there. So here we're gonna simply, once you go to pixelcut.ai, the link is given in the description, uh, we're gonna go to background remover and we're gonna select our original image and upload it here. So let's do that. So here it is, I'm just gonna double click and it's gonna take a bit of time, but it does a really, really good job. And what will happen with this is once it removes the background, we're gonna download this image. Because it has removed the background, we're gonna get the, basically the subject, right? And if we just put this on top, any imperfections that were caused by generative fill are simply gonna get hidden, okay? Now here's the best part about using this particular app and not other apps. When I click on download, it's not going to downscale this image. That is very important because we need the original resolution of the image in order for this trick to work. Because most of these free apps on the internet uh, where they remove the background, they give you the result, but they downscale the image, okay? And with that, what's gonna happen is if we were to bring this downscaled image to Photoshop and we blow it up, it's gonna pixelate the edges. So therefore our the edges of the selection will not look good, right? But pixel cut doesn't do that. So now we can just hit download. And then what we're gonna do is, it's gonna just show us uh, some message for their paid plans. We don't need that, this is completely free. We're gonna open up this transparent image that we've got right here in Photoshop. So let's do that. All right, so I've just opened up the image. And if I check the image size, you can, you'll be able to see that it is of the original uh, resolution. Okay, that comes straight from the camera. So now that we've got this, we need to put this on top of that disfigured generative fill subject. Okay, so what, how we can do that is of course we can drag and all, but in this case, we really need to place it right exactly on top. It has to align, right? So I just find it easier to just hit duplicate and in document, in destination, select this tab, okay, which is the one with the JPEG. So Go back now, it's already gonna be there and we don't need to drag and all. And now you can see if I just hide this, is basically, now this looks good, right? That's because we're actually seeing the original perfect selection created by Pixel Cut. Anything that was bad is hidden behind it. So that solves the problems if those imperfections caused by generative uh, fill didn't extend out of the original boundary of the selection, but those that did are still gonna cause us a problem. For example, now is the time that we actually zoom in to this image and we start to look out for those imperfections which are going beyond the boundary. So you can see here, at the feet, you're pretty much, you're gonna find it. Hands, feet, you are gonna be finding this problem. That's why this is a slightly challenging image. You can kind of see it here also a bit here also. Look out always for the hands first. I think this time here, this is okay. It's not really done a bad job. And if always something like here, so if we just hide this. So most of those issues are hidden behind. So here we don't really have an issue. Now the thing is, how do we exactly correct these issues? Can we use AI for that? Let's find out. So for this, you have a couple of solutions. One is simply if you just 
hit control command and click on your layer, you get your selection, inverse the selection so you're mainly working on the outer areas and use your good old clone stamp tool to simply, you know, just uh, correct those layers. So make sure sample all layers is selected and you can start this process. But I don't really want to show anything manual because that has been covered in millions of videos across YouTube, right? I want to probably show you something which not a lot of people are talking about. So when I face, uh, when I was facing this problem, I thought, why not again, since AI has caused this problem, why can't we use AI again, maybe to correct this? Now it sometimes work, it's, uh, works and it sometimes doesn't work. We'll just have to see we already had a, have a backup, which is the clone stamp tool, which is going to be pretty fast here, just a few strokes. So why not also just try to use AI? So what I'm going to do is, so that we don't face any issues with the layers and all, let's just stamp everything onto a new layer. So we're going to be a bit non-destructive, but that's fine. So we're going to hit the um, shortcut, control, command, alt, option, shift, and E, and everything comes on this layer. And now what I like to do is, it doesn't always work, but I just want to show you. Just take, just take the lasso tool and just make... Like this really small selection of the problem areas like this, okay? Something like this. And just hit generative fill without any prompt because that is supposed to remove something. That's what Photoshop says, right? Adobe people say. And sometimes I've seen when it does remove something, it does it in a way that it also adds the shadows and kind of creates a nice composite. So sometimes this works, but the problem here is it's close to the feet. But you can see, right? Here it did a pretty good job. So sometimes it works, but I don't want to lie to you. I keep practicing this a lot. Sometimes it's going to, around the feet, it can produce some very bad results or around the hands, okay? For example, in this case, if she was wearing shoes, this pretty much, this video would have been over by now, okay? So it, the process definitely works, but this is a challenging image. Now, for example, something like this. Honestly speaking, if she was my client, I would leave this. I would not even do, uh, correct this, but here, we can again just try the same thing, right? Select generator fill now. I've gone a bit over her toe, so I'm pretty sure it's gonna mess things up. So let's just wait for this. All right, let's wait for this. And that's not too bad, right? It has just given a kind of a bad looking result here, but like probably something like this or even something like this, if it has just cleared that bad looking patch because this extra thing that it, it has added, I can always mask this out or actually this the third generation that we've got will probably be better because here we don't have that problem and this little bit of a problem that we're getting this can be corrected uh, pretty easily so for the one final time let's just stamp everything back onto a new layer using our shortcut and then we can just simply take either the remove tool which again ai based or we can even do this by the spot healing brush tool but i just feel that this will be uh, much faster and then we can also just do this here. Yeah, I think that looks fine. And I think nobody's going to zoom in this much. So before we end this video, let's just quickly see a before and after. So we started from this and we've reached all the way to this. And just one final change that I would like to make here, which probably I should have actually done earlier when I was actually showing you how to change the color of the backdrop is that I just need to change the color again here because if you, now that I compare this with the original, maybe that time I just made a bit of a mistake, probably should have gone for the second variation. But this seems too saturated as compared to this. But again, it's not such a big problem. We can again uh, do this. We just need back our selection. So we can probably get it from here. And now we can just inverse this and do the same thing again basically we can just hit the solid color adjustment and this time that color is already selected the accurate color and we can just change the mode to color so that it takes the hue and color from the blend layer and it takes the luminosity of the underlying layer and now if we compare this with the original i think this is going to look more accurate so yeah and also i think i just missed out this part of her hair so this must have actually, you know, gone beyond the boundary, but I was concentrated more here. But again, just to correct this, you can use that same strategy. So let's just quickly do that also. So I'm going to zoom in and take, and I think this actually, to be frank, doesn't really need generator fill. Maybe you can just use something like the spot healing brush tool, make it short. And that should take care. I think that is fine. All right, so we are done with this. 
Now you can see that Photoshop is not just about AI. In order to use AI efficiently, you need to know how layer masking works and how the different other things also work. So if you are someone who's new to Photoshop, you can check out my free Photoshop for beginners course, which has 20 videos and it'll just get you really good with the basics before you can start using these things in a much more effective manner. If you're already there, then I've got a dedicated AI Photoshop course, which covers not just generative fill, but all the AI tools, all the generative AI tools is called Photoshop Generative AI Editing Masterclass. It's a very long course, is available via Udemy, and the link will be given to both these courses in the description. I hope that you like this video, and in case you did, do give it a thumbs up. And if you are a photographer who is doing this for your client, important thing to just know, ask them to wear shoes. I'll see you next time.